Item 6 is our receipt of petitions from the citizens of Pearl Royal. Uh, I'd like to welcome you here this evening. I know there's a lot of people here this evening, and if you want to speak tonight, we'd like to ask you to come forward to the podium, give your name, address, and address the council. We don't address back to the public, address the council here this evening, myself. Also, I, we're going to limit it to three minutes. We have about 30 people who want to speak. So I'd like for you to come forward, give your name, address, and then speak for three minutes. And hopefully that by three minutes you'll have what you have to say. I'd appreciate it if you would keep the audience quiet to those who are speaking. I don't want to see any outbursts or anyone uh, raising a problem here this evening. Uh, and I'd like to appreciate, would appreciate it if you all were to hear that here this evening at this meeting. So at this time, we'll begin our public in output or input this evening, and we'd like to ask Ms. President to give us our first speaker. Gary Kushner. Good evening, I'm Gary Kushner of 1106 Fetcher Road, Benville. I thought that the interim manager was appointed to supervise all the government operations and projects to shepherd the process to get candidates for a permanent manager and to prepare a 2021 budget, not change personnel of the 1920 budget. It was explained that the firings were not in response to performance issues, but such actions without a well thought out plan to address the immediate responsibilities they worked on raises questions and demonstrates a clear management failure. This is especially true for tourism, whose most significant period begins in only a few months. The interim manager said that he intended to prepare options for a permanent manager to consider, but then actually implemented his ideas instead. Those actions are not consistent with the citizens' desire for more transparency and a greater opportunity to participate in their government. The interim manager has criticized staff and said they are not agile or nimble enough to manage tourism, but offered no definitive evidence to support such a conclusion. I believe many with government experience would attest that tourism is exactly what should not be conducted by an outside disconnected entity. How would you evaluate success of such an outsourcing? Maybe documenting the possible reduction in unused storefronts on Main Street? The public's disenchantment with the interim manager is a reflection of shortcomings in previous areas as well. His efforts to radically change the water policy for non-town residential development when council was poised to affirm existing policy. The failure to be transparent about his personal relationship with the Crooked Run West property owner and him being president of an LLC involving real estate development. Attempting to fast track tap fee reductions before a full water study was completed so he could have a personal opportunity to break a voting tie should one occur. His promotion of an adversarial relationship on EDA issues, rather than pursuing a cooperative approach more beneficial to the public's interest, since they are county citizens as well. Failing to urge changing the town code after there was an interpretation that the government was responsible for water connections rather than developers. <clears throat> the debacle of whether he should be paid individually or as the sole employee of an LLC and promoting a communications plan that restricts media access to inquiries only through his office. Now, I can't imagine that the interim manager's efforts are without council approval or guidance, so this rests solely on your plate. While the interim manager's actions may have been well intended, the public is neither satisfied with his results nor his style. Many think this is all a done deal, but I sincerely hope that's not the case. Council's responsibility is to represent the people rather than to just govern them. It is imperative that their opinions be solicited, heard, and addressed. In conclusion, the appropriate action at this point, in my opinion, would be to objectively analyze the proposed reorganization, limit outsourcing to activities where success can be clearly measured or are specialized, and that the interim manager be directed to only identify potential areas involving significant change to be considered by a permanent manager, but not implement them. Such actions would contribute to regaining public trust and reducing unnecessary drama in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Marie McDaniel. Oh, 
Hello, my name is Marie McDaniel. I live on 1096 Kessler Road in Front Royal. I love this town. I'm a new resident. I've been here just over a year. I came from Northern Virginia. The people of Front Royal are so special to me. I haven't opened a door since I came here. When it was cold, someone at the gas station said, Ma'am, please get back in your car. I'll pump your gas for you. Everybody has made me so welcome. From my clerk at the 7-Eleven Sarah to the Christie who drives bus. Because this town has been so special to me, I wanted to give back. So I decided I'm going to learn more about this town and I volunteer at, at the visitor center. That special place and the people who work there and volunteer are amazing. They all have a passion for promoting Front Royal, even with the threat of unemployment hanging over their heads. Starting with Felicia, Hart, already fired, Tim, Gail, Debbie, Nellie, and Megan. They make the center the heart and soul of this town. To the people from all over the country and the world, Mumbai, India, last week, they are the face of Front Royal, not your signs pointing to the visitor center or the Skyline Drive. They want to know, where do we stay? Where do we shop? And how the heck do we get to Skyline Drive? They also ask, why should we relocate to Front Royal rather than Winchester, Strasbourg, and Lorraine? And we tell them about our wonderful town. The visitor center is Front Royal's heart and soul. Don't lose it the way we seem to lose dogs, cats, goats, cows, and a lot of dollars, over 20 million. Thank you for listening, and I do love this town very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Joanne Garney. <coughs> Hello, my name is Joanne Carney. I live at 364 Summit Point Drive in Front Royal. I am here as a private citizen to speak about the tourism outsourcing plan. I'm also a volunteer at the Visitor Center. I was not asked to speak at this meeting. It's come to light that the town tried outsourcing tourism before without success. The department was brought back under the town's management and its scope was expanded. That was a positive direction that should be retained. As of now, remaining staff and operations are in limbo, waiting to find out their fate. But along with the toll on these dedicated public servants, the other potential losses for the town, its businesses, and residents must be considered. If you outsource, you lose control. The town is our product, and our mission at the center is to support the success of every business and attraction. New management may have a different mission. What loyalty will they have to the town or its businesses? How will the town's interests be protected, and what oversight will there be on how your money is being spent? Right now, you have full control of the message and methods. Do you really want to lose that? Mr. T. Dirk reportedly said the government is not agile and creative enough to manage tourism, but the department staff have displayed creativity and agility in new outreach and initiatives. They have done and can do more. Tourism is the town's lifeblood. The council should be increasing support for the department, not handing it off to an unknown quantity. Two, you lose expertise. You have a knowledgeable, reliable, professional workforce who each handles specific operational tasks. They devote weekdays, weekends, and off hours to providing visitors with the best possible experience. They regularly go above and beyond in service and have excellent reviews. If the rehire option fails, the town stands to lose all of that talent. Even if they are hired, the job limbo returns every time the contract is rebid. This persistent state of insecurity will eventually lead to high turnover, and you'll be left with low performers. The visitor center's reputation will suffer, and by extension, the towns. Some say volunteers can do it all. That's unrealistic. Volunteers cannot be expected to carry the same levels of commitment and responsibility as paid staff. Three, you lose ground. Tourism staff have been building bridges between the town and business owners, and had just formed a committee to coordinate tourism efforts with the county. Business owners felt they had a guide and ally on the inside to help them navigate town government procedures as they began new ventures. We were casting our nets wider, utilizing many means to attract visitors and foster partnerships. Now those connections and plans are either broken or damaged. 
It's yet another blemish on our reputation that we can't afford. This outsourcing stands to do more harm than good and could cost much more than it hopes to save, as many other municipalities have learned. Why repeat a course of action that has already been found unsuccessful by your predecessors? Consider the long-term ramifications and potential losses. Please reject the outsourcing plan and keep the staff and operations of tourism with the town for the sake of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Aldridge. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Two weeks ago, I came to Sir, would you give me I'm sorry, name and address, please? 256 Orchard Street in Front Royal. Two weeks ago, I came before you and presented you with two resolutions, one of which you're going to be approaching tonight, the other of which was the militia resolution. The reason that I am here this evening is because of that resolution. I understand it's not under consideration at the moment, but I did want to bring something to your attention. The new Virginia, Virginia militia is here. The new Virginia militia is active. On February 6th, there was a crisis that happened down in Caswell County. Major flooding occurred in which people needed help. The new Virginia militia activated Thursday evening. Friday morning, we proceeded with members of this town to collect supplies, water, food, etc. <coughs> to provide to those citizens in Tazewell County. Saturday morning, a crew of 12 gentlemen from this area headed down there and gave assistance. That assistance included all kinds of things that people are going to need in that flooded area. They took four-wheel drive vehicles, they took boats down there, they helped in any way they could while they were down there. They returned back to us Sunday. As I said before with the militia, we're not here to be a bunch of podunks out there with guns. We're here to help the community. And the New Virginia Militia would also like to propose the opportunity to have a volunteer day. I believe we're looking maybe at the end of April where we could bring together the fire department, the police department, the 4-H center, many of the other volunteer organizations and bring the citizens of this town and of this county together to help out. I do ask you to consider that militia resolution again, and I thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Mr. President. Jim Hart. reminds me of uh, Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham, for those who don't know who Jeff Dunham is, is a puppeteer. Mr. Mayor, guess who his puppets Mr. Mayor, are? point of order. Guess who his puppets are? Mr. Hart, would you not use the personality speak, please? Okay. Just give it all you see. All I'm saying is, <clears throat> Tietrich is controlling what you all say. Everybody knows I have another observation. In the paper, teacher related a priority as to sending the water out to the north side. And what, what is his meaning for that? Is it a new subdivision you all planning out there? And if it is, I hear individuals such as Tiedrick and a certain judge as a mayor, point of order, speculation. That's just speculation as a whole. Mr. Mr. Hart, I want you to continue. I, I'm sorry for the interruptions, please. Okay, please uh, uh, maybe stop keep, there for keep, your keep your thoughts and don't, don't relate to names, please. Okay. Termination of five employees. 
Three of those is the engineering, zoning, and planning. What do they have to do with the new subdivision? Another termination is the council clerk. Why is the council clerk terminated? When you already have a council clerk to replace is It could be that uh, the previous town council clerk has not signed a non-disclosure. The fourth item is how is the progress going with the new town manager recruitment? I'd like to find out how far you are along in replacing the town manager. Also, I suggest that you, the council members, forget running for a re-election because I don't think you're ever going to get re-elected. Now, Mr. Major, please don't do your standard communications after all the meeting here. We already know how you all stand. Actions speak louder than words. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Janice Hart. I reside at 1120 Ashby Street. This whole fiasco of the last week has been very cleverly disguised. Last week's bloodletting is just a smokescreen for the big picture. The plans that Mr. Teeter and this council, except for the mayor, has. It is about the water on the north end, uh, on the parcel behind Target. Without water, it cannot be developed. But even more importantly than that, this is about a subject near and dear to our town manager, consolidation of the town and Warren County. The proposed firing, or the actual firing, of five department heads, our clerk of council and four part-time positions whose salaries were budgeted until June 30th of this year. How much money is that saving? Why slash these positions? Why wasn't a study presented on the cost savings prior to cutting these positions? Why not show us, the taxpayer voters, the great deal it would be? How much will it cost to find a reliable firm to handle tourism for us? What firm can handle our planning and zoning work? Or does council just want to hand that off to the county? Does the council feel the town no longer needs an engineer? Should we give that to the county as well? Will our police department be the next department on the hit list? Meanwhile, who pays off an $8 million police department brand new? I doubt the county is willing to absorb our debt. Will that come from what Mr. Tedrick likes to call the slush fund, even though there isn't one and he should know so? Why has this council not looked for a permanent town manager? Because they want to keep Mr. Tedrick, despite all his denials, to finish the job. Consolidation. In 2010, Mr. Tedrick was head of the Blue Building <coughs> Committee. I have a copy of the PowerPoint and the results and the recommendations of this committee. In short, it is a primer in consolidation. If your younger council members haven't read it, I recommend that you do. It's an interesting read on an attractive background. Taxpayers remember, it is, as many taxpayers remember, it was a very heated and emotional issue. Fast forward 10 years and here we are again. This is where we're headed, this interim town manager and council, with the exception of Mayor Tewalt, are leading this town down this path yet again. Each one of you stands to gain from this in one way or another. Four votes is all that's needed. Let's let the county take us over and get the water done and be done with it. I, for one, would never vote for that. The expression about putting lipstick on the pig it's still a pig. I rest my case.
Our town manager stated as the new interim town manager, he wanted to set the table for the new town manager to be allowed the choice to implement or not implement significant changes in the town government. Looks like to me those changes are already taking place. Our town manager also said after this year's current fiscal budget, fiscal budget that carries the new town tourism department and visitor center staff through June 30th, decisions will be made by the entity or entities contracted to take over those functions from town staff. Such employee retention full or part-time, including the current tourism director. Why are you letting Mr. Tedder do all that right now? Our town manager said by cutting staff, the town will save $234,000, but he wants to increase uh, wait just a second. I'm... He wants to do increases that will take twenty-four thousand to forty-six thousand to blighted structures. Why are we as citizens paying to to do tear down somebody else's house? And this will be done. He will put this as a lead. A lien on these houses that we are going to front the money on, the lien may never be paid off for 50 years. Why should we have the brunt of paying all this money and never receiving the money back? $4,000 increase to downtown events for gazebo night. $4,000 for gazebo night, yet we're firing people who need a job. Our town manager said some employees were let go for the good of the budget. He also said they were let go due to poor performance. How could you praise people one month and let them go the next month? Shake your head there, Mr. Manager. I like how you laughed at me and my sign. Excuse me. Point of order. Yeah, point of order, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gavin, your time is pretty much out. Can you close it, please? I'll close it. In December of 2008, Mr. Tedrick stood before the town council and said town business is conducted poorly, illegally, and belligerently. Things never seem to change. Thank you. Thank you. Some comments and some questions, I'll just say them. In the state of Virginia, travel is worth $25.8 billion, and that translates to $151,300,000 being spent in Front Royal Arts Board and County, and that gives us, or the county, $2,920,000 in tax revenue. So it's big business, and it is disappointing to have the Tourism and Community Development Office gutted. And I question whether or not you are actually saving money. Because when you think of it, you are losing out on opportunities for economic development. There are many people who went to her office <coughs> with ideas for businesses, and she would do a lot of guidance and go through the incentives and so on and so forth with them. So she's very interested and quite passionate in developing the county as well as the town. And we are cooperating with Kim. So if you heard the town, heard Kim. I don't think that when there's an absence of person in that office, in that main office, that you can say you're saving money. So please, would you consider looking at that and come up with an answer for it? We were poised through that office to really take off. We had done so many things. I say we because I'm a volunteer in the CDBG grant, which Hart and Camp got for us, and it's worth $700,000, and they're not here to manage it. Um, I wonder how long it will take us to get back up to speed. If you have strangers doing this, or you outsource it, I believe it will take you about a year to get up to speed. And I don't think that we can afford to wait that long for it. Okay, some questions. Um, one, 
As I look at the budget, I'm not sure that I see a horticulture position in infill. Okay? And then I see in several other accounts, like water administration, sewer administration, wastewater, and water maintenance, and sewer, that the salaries have been cut. And I, I'm wondering how you do that, and what would be the effect on the leaders of these organizations or, or businesses that we do. Then on general revenue fund, we, I see that we borrowed $3,220,000, okay, for the projects in infrastructure. But my question is, how much of the available funds, and let's say the electric account, did, does this borrow? Um, I would be very concerned if it had been leveraged up to the maximum, okay? And so I would like to know what percent of the available funds have been used. And I don't want to leverage up to the max because obviously we have emergencies, which we always do. Then we would not be able to address those issues, okay? So that would be another question I want. That's too nice. Oh, you'll get your questions tomorrow, okay? Thanks. <laughs> Craig Anderson. Good evening, y'all. Craig Anderson, 110 Sunset Lane. Um, and you see my sticker, so you know what I'm all about. When I got that sticker on, I am uh, professionally proud and, uh, and just to be a stand-up citizen. We really proved that when we went down to Richmond, and uh, we won over the hearts of all the law enforcement down there. We were put in a cage and had snipers put down on us, and we were called dirty names, and we disproved that, we blew that out of the water. Please support sanctuary, uh, making us a sanctuary town. And uh, I have my own ideas on militia. I'm working with another group at for an uh, uh, authorized militia can be tailored to whatever we want. Personally, I'd like to pick up trash uh, and share a few about it while, while we had firearms on us. And just because we're so demonized, that would be my first personal goal is to no longer demonize the gun owner because when people have, uh, honest citizens have guns, you're much safer. So uh, try to keep it short and, uh, and uh, please confirm us a sanctuary town if you would please. Thanks. Stephen Schlosinger. Uh, Stephen Schlesinger, uh, 409 East Main Street. Uh, this great thing all written out. Mr. Meza, you have a ruling for me. We're going to try it anyway, okay? I'm going to say some things, I'm going to say some words, some not so kind, some not so nice, okay? Uh, we'll refrain from using anyone's name, so we're going to call him Mr. T. Mr. T, you are obviously a very narrow-minded no. individual and you're wanting to hand over all the doors into a private company. Sir. Yes. No, no, no. We're not going to have, have that. All right, we'll, we'll slap that. I'm saying that I don't want it under that tone of voice, nor do I want it. Address to Mr. T, please. I will address it to uh, Mr. T, Mr. T. Mr. T. Mr. T. All right, let's try it over again. All right, let's try it over again. Um, I'm going to just go through the bullet points here. If you, uh, you might as well just send out the uh, the tourism to India, because that's pretty much what you're going to do when you're going to outsource it. I've lived on Main Street for a while now. It's, what they've done on Main Street is fantastic. What they've done with tourism is fantastic. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I know you guys walk Main Street on, you know, pretty much on a daily basis. I've seen many of you guys down on Main Street. You guys have done a wonderful job. I think we need to keep tourism in the house, without a doubt. And, uh, you know, it may not be the right person that was there before, but I'm sure we can find the right person to be there now. So that's my point. So, uh, you know, for as far as the town council, I thank you for uh, letting me talk and uh, don't take any wooden medals. Thank you. Thank you. Skip Rogers. Good evening. 
my name is Skip Rogers, 30 Blue Ridge Avenue. Uh, and I'm also a business owner. I've, uh, I've been a business owner for 40 years and the last 11 years on Chester Street. I just have a couple of short comments. I attended last week an ad hoc meeting that was called very quickly and to a lot of folks surprised that a temporary employee of the town uh, somehow had the authority to allow four senior members of our town to be removed. Now, I'm a businessman, and I've hired and I've fired. Uh, I've had temporary workers in senior positions, but I can't understand how anyone in a temporary position, no matter how long they've been around, no matter what office or position they held, but as a temporary employee to be given the authority to dismiss senior personnel, to me is just outrageous. That was my first point. My second point uh, has to do with a meeting that I attended last week as well. That was an open planning meeting, and I appreciate the comment earlier uh, Simon Roberts rules and specifically a term that was used in that reading that had to do with liar. At that planning meeting, there happened to be quite a few folks in attendance. And also, if you may have noted, those of us who were there, there were quite a number of children. And to hear the language that was used directed at this town's leader, to me, is shameful, it was aggressive, it was assaulted, and those individuals who have been noted should be ashamed of themselves. Thank you for this opportunity. Stockton Road in Front Royal. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. I was looking at the uh, proposed budget for the coming year, and uh, Mr. Teeter was kind enough to provide me with a, a copy of it. And I sympathize with him and BJ putting that thing together. I've done a few of them myself. It ain't no fun. His problem was, was double, though, because he's also being asked to make management decisions. And he's made them in his best judgment. It's up to the council to either approve it or disapprove it. Just like today, President Trump released his proposed budget for the coming year. Although said, and sure threw it in the trash. Dead on arrival. They'll write their own. And that's what you guys got to do. You got to make the judgment over what it is. His proposal is good or not. Now, one, one big thing that I really object to, approximately a half a million dollars as a debt service on what promises to be at least an $11 million project running a redundant water and sewer line out to the North Carter. Now, I've been trying to find out for six months whether we're legally required to do that. Neither Mr. Napier, the mayor or Mr. Teeter could tell me. Nobody knows. So I think that means we're not required to do it. If Dominion wants an extra water line, let them pay for it. We don't need to pay them. Anyhow, I would appreciate uh, council considering that and eliminate that item from the budget. That will save half a million dollars for 30 years. 30 years. That's 15 million bucks. That's larger than any other project any of you have ever done, including the Lee Joint Parkway. Because we only pay, what, 34% or 50% or 17%. Anyhow, if you 
give some consideration to eliminating that. I don't know what you're going to do with a half million dollars. You disperse it among yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Chris Ramsey. I'm Chris Ramsey. I live at 400 Fulton Lane here in Front Royal. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Members of Council. I spoke a few weeks ago about an inequity that's come to light in the water and sewer. Uh, Department with respect to town policy on water and sewer uh, tap fees, access fees. Under the current policy, I'm required to pay a substantial higher fee for my water and sewer taps than others in this town, as well as those who I represent. I don't know if you've gotten you've forgotten about my presentation or you've chosen to ignore it, but I would like a written response to how you justify your position on the new policy that's been instituted. Not only that, I have a zoning permit that's ready to pick up at the town office tomorrow. How will I be treated when I go to pay my fees? And I have, and as I asked previously, and I'm being redundant. Can this be substantiated? Thank you. Ms. Patricia Failmesker. Phil Metzger, 636 River Ridge Drive, Middletown 22645. Democracy is really messy, isn't it? Um, I have just a couple of numbers that relate to tourism that I think you'll find uh, very interesting. Uh, I got these numbers from the website for Virginia Tourism. The, uh, the occupancy tax collected in 2019 in Warren County was $316,000, 171. The meals tax was $1,755,650. Now I don't know yet where that tourism money is going, what the county is using it for, what the town is using it for, but I will. There were 28,000 visitors coming to the visitor center last year. That's a lot of people that are being directed to hotels, tourist sites, restaurants. But not only that, they are welcomed. As the lady previously said, the visitor center really is the heart and soul of this town. I have two questions. Uh, the other interesting fact is, According to the Shenandoah Valley Tourism Partnership, Front Royal is among the 10 most visited towns in the valley. That's something to protect. I do not understand why a trolley that costs nearly $40,000 a year that serves the citizens of Front Royal and Warren County becomes a tourism issue. I also don't understand why Blighted Buildings becomes a tourism issue. That is something that affects all of us every day. I, I just, I don't get it. So when I get some more numbers about how this money gets divided up, I'll see you again. Susan Shearhart. Good evening. My name is Susan Shearhart, and I reside at 327 Scott Island Place here in Front Royal. Um, I co chair the Front Royal Warren County Appalachian Trail Community Committee. Our town and county were jointly designated an official AT community by the Appalachian Trail Conservancy in 2012. Our committee of volunteers raises awareness of and support for trail-friendly local business, local land use policies that promote the trail and its views, and hiking as a healthy outdoor activity. 
The AT community designation has directly resulted in five new businesses, including three on Main Street, all of which are providing. At this time, we are proud to partner with 22 local businesses and organizations who have sought and earned AT community supporter certification. Last week, we learned that prior to any public hearing, the FY21 proposed budget included firing key personnel in the town government and noticed that tourism would be privatized. Our group immediately expressed our concerns in a letter delivered to the mayor and each town council member. That letter was also published as a letter to the editor in the Royal Examiner. Not only did tourism attract $151 million in visitor expenditures to Warren County in 2018, a 4.9% increase over 2017, but according to the Virginia Tourism Corporation, it supported over 1,700 jobs, a combined payroll of 23 million, and contributed 3 million to local tax coffers. Some more numbers. The average through hike along the Appalachian Trail will spend $5,500 during the course of their hike, and another 4,000 on gear. According to a 2010 survey, they'll spend an average of $153 per town visit, a figure that has no doubt increased over the last 10 years. Last week, based on 210 reviews, our visitor center was ranked second only to Skyline Caverns as top attractions in Front Royal. Do you know how unusual that is for a visitor center to be deemed an attraction? And we're about to fire that entire staff and change a recipe that has been steadily generating increased revenue for each of the past five years. We were also puzzled to learn that the tourism budget for marketing and advertising has been frozen. This is money already allocated to the current fiscal year and critical to generating business for 170 tourism-dependent businesses in the county who count on the visitor center and its marketing materials and services to generate income. 85% of Front Royal's tourism budget is covered by lodging fees, all collected from visitors to our area, with the remaining 15% coming from Front Royal promotional merchandise sold at the visitor center. None of our tourism department salaries or expenses come out of our own taxpayer dollars. Why are we cutting the tourism budget just as the tourism season is about to begin? Along the Appalachian Trail, there are more than 40 designated communities. Our community is considered a model, supporting 22 AT community business sponsors. We, are, we do have the leading number. All locally owned businesses that enrich our local economy. Due to the joint effort between tourism, community development, the visitor center, and business members over the past few years, our town now enjoys a strong reputation as a welcoming and helpful town to hikers and tourists, making us one of the friendliest trail towns. So why all this effort to engage the outdoor industry? Because it's a $362 billion industry driven largely by hiking, camping, and rock climbing, all of which can be found in abundance here in Front Royal. Nationally, revenue revenue by the outdoor industry exceeds even oil and gas. So to mix metaphors, Front Royal should be riding that wave, not starting the golden loose. Thank you for your time. Discretion. Sign at cardboard. I read your mind. <laughs> I wish Susan could read mine because she's such a fast reader. <laughs> uh, Sonia Carl Ward, 210 West First Street, Front Royal. Last week's budget presentation featured a classic sales tactic. Present two nasty looking extremes and then your own choice in the middle, which creates a false sense of urgency and the perception of no other alternatives. In fact, the very scary projected tax increase to local businesses is pure fiction. State code places a cap on many types of taxes, and our restaurants and real estate businesses and real retail businesses are already at that limit. Citizens of Front Royal top the organizational chart in the PowerPoint, yet we the citizens have had no input into how our elected officials have dramatically restructured our government in secret and allocated our hard-earned tax dollars without our consent. Furthermore, it is highly unorthodox to make such dramatic changes with a temporary manager in place especially one who has humbly confessed his lack of experience in municipal management. I fear that your decisions open the town to lawsuits from several quarters. In addition, coupled with our plummeting county reputation, mismanagement has legal, economic, and ethical repercussions that will make replacement of a temporary town manager difficult, to say nothing of attracting new businesses to the region. At present, Page County is moving toward removal of its tourism from chamber management. I've given you two pages of their research as handouts, which only confirm Warren County's conclusion from many years ago that chambers are not the home for tourism. 
And I think you need to ask us, the taxpayers and businesses who depend on tourism, whether we think a contractor is a good idea. Also, Mayor Tewalt's decision to speak out in Monday's work session compiled with the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, which allows discussion of personnel, but not reorganization of town government in closed session. Thus, forbidden topics would include privatization of the visitor center. Of the 29 million allocated to capital projects, approximately two thirds is revenue generated by enterprise funds for water, sewer, and electricity, which are self-supporting. Again, a presentation that created false sense of urgency and lack of alternatives. The remainder, largely salaries, comes from the general fund. So why were all these positions eliminated? Or is the tourism dust-up really meant to distract us from the main event, elimination of planning and zoning department, which would mainly benefit builders and developers? A designated zoning official and a board of appeal are legal obligations. In fact, eliminating staff positions may have nullified our zoning code. Was that the intent? If so, I think we, the citizens, have a right to know. In contrast to our business-friendly rhetoric, any business seeking permits is out of luck right now and could not be blamed for looking elsewhere. Perhaps the part-time landscape architect is meant to become a zoning official? A municipal landscape architect is a great idea, but most of their time is spent reviewing and approving plans for development, not decorating surroundings for tourists. Right now, no one on staff can approve those plans. I'm also concerned about this half-cent tax cut. What is our obligation for the duration of the bond debt? Has feasibility and forecasting been conducted with Davenport, your fiscal oversight contractor? Has water and sewer submitted its review? That needs to be done before you vote on our budget. A tax cut now may mean let larger increases in the near future. I'm no budget expert, but if even an amateur can pick up these red flags, well, better go back to the drawing board. I want to see people on my council that I can trust. And I don't recall anyone running on a right-sizing, let's destroy our local government platform. Thank you for your time. Kelly Hart, 12 West 15th Street. Thank you, Mayor Tawal. Hello, everyone on the council. Actually, everything that's been said that I was going to say has already been said, so I won't spend too much time. I do think that everyone's presentation has been wonderful. They're asking some great questions, and I sincerely hope that each and every one of you are giving them the attention they deserve. These are our citizens. This is our town. So give them attention, Chris, Jacob, Natasha, everyone here, and, and answer these questions. And one suggestion I had, um, I know the press is here, could there be a compilation of all of our very good questions and with some thoughtful answers written out and published somewhere? So I'm requesting that from the press. And I really look forward to hearing these answers. And I really hope you guys get us on the right path, because all these statements are right. Thank you so much. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Gary Green. I'm the owner of Mountain Trails at 120 East Main Street. I've invested a few hundred thousand dollars in the community in the past three years and created seven jobs. Prior to coming to uh, Front Royal, uh, as a child, my father used to bring us here pretty much every summer where we'd get on the Skyline Drive and head south to Winston Salem, North Carolina. It's all the way to Boone and Blue Ridge Parkway. But prior to coming here, I spent 20 years managing morale, welfare, and recreation programs for the U.S. Air Force in Alaska, California, Florida, and Illinois. When the sale of Mountain Trails was completed back in 2015, I was on the internet in Illinois looking at the obvious expansion from Mountain Trails in Winchester, and it was from Orwell. You did a fantastic proximity of your natural assets for outdoor recreation and expansion and growth. And it is my considered opinion that in the past three years, uh, I have experienced nothing but growth on Main Street, and I've seen this firsthand. I've spoken with people from all over the globe. 
from you know, France and Italy, Germany, China, and they all came because they were coming to Front Royal or to the, uh, the, the Shenandoah Park. Um, that has been reflected in my bottom line, my ledger, with a 17% growth from last year, which I assure you in retail is very positive numbers okay, because it simply doesn't happen in this day and time with brick and mortar uh, as opposed to the internet. But those numbers are, are wonderful. And I experienced it firsthand by running into those people that were coming to, to the town. So I sort of caution uh, any quick move by an, actor, an interim position or otherwise uh, that would change something that is already working. If it isn't, if it isn't broken, we probably shouldn't, shouldn't fix it, so to speak. My second point is that I am an appointed member of the Front Royal Warren County Tourism Advisory Board and appointed by uh, previous versions of this very council. Uh, and I was appointed until, I believe, 2022, if I'm not mistaken. But I have a copy here of the memorandum of agreement between ourselves, the committee, and this board, and Warren County. There is no nomenclature in this memorandum of agreement that was drafted by you guys that advises, if we were an advisory board, that, that pretty much stipulates that the growth of tourism, where tourism was heading in the future, uh, should have been run by that, that council. Uh, at least for input, since we'd already spent close to $30,000 for brand new wayfinding signs, gateway signs, for commercial, TV commercial spots that have already been produced, up to $30,000. Uh, so all of that just seems to be for nothing. It's my full intention to uh, found an outdoor, three-day outdoor recreation themed festival here in Front Royal that will not require street closures, I promise you. But I, it, it, I'm concerned that those concepts and others might either be squelched or suffocated by any outsourcing that doesn't understand uh, who we are, what we have available to us here, and that's really my concern. My primary point here is that if we were uh, designated as an advisory board regarding tourism for Front Royal and Warren County, we were not consulted in any way. Thank you. Rappaport. Bruce Rappaport, friend on West Main Street, front row. Well, uh, to start off, uh, before I was read the Robert's, Robert's rules tonight, I had some other things that I wanted to say. <laughs> then I looked up and I said, uh, in the censorship, we trust. So, uh, I'll be good. <laughs> Frankly, I can't add a whole lot more than what some of these folks have been saying about the firings. And uh, I don't agree with the direction that the town has taken, but uh, we all have our own opinions. Uh, seems to me that uh, there was talk about bringing in an assistant town manager. Uh, many towns have what they call an assistant town manager, but they sort of streamline it with the planning director as an assistant town manager as well. And you had a guy here that was had 20 years of experience and uh, haven't been able to get past why I was let go. But anyway, uh, your, your thoughts of going to outsourcing, um, I have a manufacturing background, and I have found over the years, about 30 years of experience, that vertical integration, you have a lot of control. When you go horizontal, you're really at the mercy of your suppliers and your contractors, and you never know what you're going to get. Sort of like a box of chocolates. <laughs> now, look, you folks are moonlighters. I mean, you get paid a little bit of money, but you all have day jobs. You're not a public admin. I mean, you don't have an expertise in public administration. If you did, you'd have about you'd have urban planning degrees, and you would have an MBA, and a lot of 
a lot of additional education. I know one individual has an MBA, but uh, as far as uh, your interim town manager goes, he does have some supervisory experience about you know, 20 years ago. Um, so, look, I'm a ga I gamble occasionally. In fact, I've been known to play the horses at times. Okay? But I don't like to gamble with taxpayers' money. Privatizing your local government operations is a gamble and is really a panacea. We've all heard your arguments for privatizing. Now here are some arguments not to do. It's a great opportunity for fraud and corruption to occur. Higher costs for consumers is imminent. Inflexibility due to long-term contracts. Profit rather than residents' needs is the primary motivator of the contractor. They're in to make money. Bruce, uh, can you cut it a little short? We're going to finish it up. Well, okay. okay. But, yeah, right. just, just let me get okay. four more right. topics, okay? Breathe. More dollars required for oversight of your contractors. That means more staff needed for oversight. Less control over the quality of service. No one-to-one -one contact with the public. Paying for staff for oversight and for companies to make a profit will lead to paying more for the same service. Contractors <coughs> has an incentive to spend the lease to provide services, which is in conflict with the town needs. That's all I've got. Thank you. Hello, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and Town Council. I'm Vern Vasquez. I live at 120 Gloucester Road. I've been preceded by, I think, some impressive speakers who pointed out some facts and figures for your consideration. I don't intend to waste your time by reiterating any of them, but I will say, I want to say two things. One is that I've been very disturbed by this privatization plan. So I decided a little homework for myself would be to call some other small cities in the state of Virginia whose primary, uh, you know, they had, where tourism played a very strong role. And I contacted Luray, Williamsburg, Winchester, Bristol, and Abingdon and asked them how did they manage their tourism team and if any of them outsourced. Of those cities mentioned, only one city outsourced, and that was Bristol, Virginia along with their sister city, uh, Bristol, Tennessee. And they did not give me a very resounding endorsement of how that was working out. In fact, they said it was going to be up for review in council as to whether they would continue. So I would ask you to consider that. There's another, a second point that I would like to bring in the budget. Uh, I did spend a lot of time reviewing the budget. And uh, there's one section of the buzz budget that gave me pause. And if I have misconstrued or misunderstand it in any way, I, I hope that you get back to me and maybe you can help me understand it. And that is um, on page 20, line item 41001. And it has to do with the salaries in the office of the town manager. Um, I know that currently under contract, and this is public information, I'm not revealing any confidentialities here, our current interim town manager earns 150000 annually. But I noticed on page 20, again, line item 41001, where it says town, town manager salary, it reads 195000 for fiscal year 2021. Okay? Um, and that's a rather healthy 23% increase in pay. Addition, additionally to that, he has requested an assistant town manager and total with benefits, the bottom line salaries of the town manager office totals 397825 So I want to put this in a little bit of context. So I did a little research with some employment um, uh, websites, and I 
ask the question, what's the average salary in Virginia for town managers? And the answer came up, $96,000. That's the average. There is a high end of about $125,000 and a lower end. And you can imagine these are for cities that uh, have low, much lower populations. So and here's another fact to put in context. The, the, for a family of four in Front Royal, the median income is $49,631. That's about $12,300 lower than the national average. What does that tell you? So what that tells me is that we don't come from a town with a lot of resources, that we don't have a strong tax base. So just one more statement to, final, to, to finalize this. Budgets are far from ideal. They're the opposite of ideal. They are statements of how to prioritize needs using a finite amount of resources. This takes knowledge, wisdom, and just plain old common horse sense. I don't see that reflected in some parts of this budget because I feel that something is not quite right. Thank you. to serve your favorite meal on a garbage can lid instead of a plate, it would not be an appealing meal. Tact matters, presentation matters, and timing matters. Gutting the town staff also gutted the citizens' trust. Ultimately, it is the council who is elected to be in charge of the ship. An independently contracted interim town manager is the equivalent of a house sitter who has now decided on his own accord to start knocking down walls and renovating the entire house. Chaos has been created because of the manner in which he executed and presented this budget proposal. The citizens look to you, the council, to take the reins and restore the calm. Mr. Tiedrich said at the budget meeting last Monday that there were only three options. He stated this as if it was an absolute fact. But there are other options. There are always other options. He said it would be inhumane, an inhumane thing to do to fire employees, in a, it would be a humane thing to do to fire the employees in advance so that they wouldn't have to learn of their misfortune at a public meeting. <laughs> I'm trying here, guys. So instead, they were blindsided privately by their termination, and the public was left not only blindsided by the firings, but also left to worry and wonder. Thank you. I would appreciate that. Closer to it? Okay. Right. Thank you. So instead, they were blindsided privately by their termination, and the public was left not only blindsided by the firings, but also left to worry and wonder for several days about what was going on before even, even the slightest explanation was given. It created chaos in a town already torn apart by scandal. The citizens were unaware of the serious issues facing our budget. Why were we unaware? Because on October 21st, 2019, at the time he had proposed lowering tap fees, Mr. Tiedrich said the town was not having budget issues and that there was a surplus of money just sitting idle. He said we needed to drain the slush fund. So yes, we are now taken by shock to see the budget reflect a 180 degree change in facts being presented. The presentation of this budget could have gone much more smoothly simply by being upfront and honest with the public in a timely fashion. Give us a heads up in advance that while you had previously stated there was extra money, there is in fact not enough money. Ask for the citizens' input as to how we would prefer to see our tax dollars spent. Do we want a tax decrease? Would we prefer a combination of tax increase and a few job cuts? 
Ask if anyone else had insightful ideas of places to help balance the budget. Because there definitely are some. We've discussed them. I am a fiscal conservative. I believe in small government and responsible spending. But you don't terminate nine positions and in the next breath ask to add a six-figure position for an assistant town manager. Whether it's a good idea to add the position or not becomes completely irrelevant because the timing intact was wrong. Our community has been left in total upheaval for two years now. We have three new wonderful supervisors and finally have a new EDA board in place. The community wants to focus on healing, but now this happens. This, this constant chaos is like continually picking a scab and never allowing it to heal. You cannot earn the trust of the public if you constantly put them into a, a frenzy of chaos and political theater. Mr. Tiedrich's actions have not only damaged the citizens' faith in him, but also the citizens' faith in this council to ensure that proper checks and balances are finally being put in place. Council, I beg of you, show us you will step up and do the right thing. Thank you. and recognize the efforts put forth by our current council in regards to the future and betterment of our town. For years, I've approached this stand few times to commend the work that council has done, but more often than not, it's been to offer my advice, give feedback, and beg of you not to raise our taxes. Let me read to you before I speak a definition that all in attendance are privy to find on their own. The definition I'll read to you is manager. It's a noun. And number one is a person responsible for controlling or administering all or part of a company or similar organization. Two, a person who controls the activities, business dealings, and other aspects of the career of an entertainer, athlete, group of musicians, business, etc. A lot of the people in attendance tonight flooded the seats behind me last year, only at budget hearing time, to yell, no higher taxes. The EDA scandal is the reason for this. Why are you raising our taxes? You're punishing us, et cetera, et cetera. There's a difference between being loud and being productive. I choose productivity. Also, I wish those who come to crucify the council instead of working with you would realize and consider approaching the stand with humility. Some need humility to see that there may be a better approach to getting work done versus <coughs> talking about it. I appreciate the budget being scrubbed and any vigorous spending to be ended before considering to increase our taxes as it was last year. Some might question the spending that I'm speaking of. It's not about the employees, but the interim term manager removed a $35,000 line item fee from the proposed budget that was included to charge electric cars downtown, which charged, during peak season might I add, five to six cars per month, one in the off seasons. So thank you for removing line items such as that. So while some may disagree with other appropriations of the budget, there is good being done. Letting employees go is never easy and almost <coughs> never personal. It is and was a business decision. And an assistant town manager and the proposed budget is beyond necessary. And I can only say that I wish we would have had such in place earlier and I wish that we would have had a functioning council that could come to a consensus and work with the former town manager and BJ to have found the funds for that. Because if that would have happened, we wouldn't be in the predicament that we're in today. Where we have an interim town manager, we would have had an assistant town manager who could have stepped into that role. I'm sorry to all of you on the council and to the town manager that the constituents expected you to not work and sit idly when it came to the budget and the future economic state of our town. It keeps being reiterated that Mr. Tiedrich is only the interim. Excuse me for my ignorance, but no matter the link of an expected employment, and I've worked for some of the largest financial corporations in the country, I don't think anyone would be happy with or appreciate an employee who wasn't doing any work and was just sitting there, twiddling their thumbs, waiting for their replacement to come along in the next six months. It is my understanding from speaking individually and directly with all of you, not by hearsay or the media or letters to the editor, 
that you've been working collectively as a council even before Mr. Tiedrich was a town manager to get work done and move forward. You were simply waiting and seeking leadership and financial insight from BJ and the next manager, whoever it was going to be, before it was announced that it would be Mr. Tiedrich. Also, if I may, Mr. Tiedrich, I have never once heard you personally say that the Chamber of Commerce was who you planned or proposed that we outsource tourism to. Is that correct? That is, again, hearsay. It was simply the term outsourcing, and they jumped to conclusions on what has happened in the past. That's right. Well, excuse me. It's carried up a little bit. Matt, it's my apologies that you seem to have become the Trump of Front Royal. You've come in to do a job you were asked to do. You were appointed to do. You were asked to clean some stuff up. You worked at the discretion of the council, and there's conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory and downright accusations and personal attacks thrown at you every single day, no matter what you've done since you've been in your position. And despite being very receptive to answering public comment every time you're asked or confronted, and you've done so with humility. Thank you, Council, for being fiscally conservative and working as a government should, the interim town manager at the discretion of the elected town council members. Also tonight, you'll see my sticker, Gun Save Lives. Thank you, Tavis. So I'm looking forward to the town of Fort Royal becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary. Our last speaker of the night is Scott Jenkins. Scott Jenkins, 3471 Green Mountain Road, in the county. I'll be brief. Being the last one, I'll try to hold you here too long. Uh, just two, I've, I've sent a couple of letters to town council and to the mayor. I won't rehash the contents of those. I trust that you have a chance to read that uh, and uh, you're aware of my thoughts. Uh, but two other points I want to make. Uh, during the time that we've been discussing privatization and reduction in tourism funding, there hasn't been any real empirical evidence provided of how it's going to improve the delivery of services for our community. Tourism is a revenue generator, a jobs creator, it improves the quality of life here, and nothing that was presented to us in the recommendations and proposals and budget submissions said anything about how those proposals would improve the community, the benefit of the community. I think that should be looked at. It's not just a budget issue. We need to look at how those funds are spent and how we benefit from it. And any decision to radically change the government structure, the town structure, that delivers services to the community should be thoroughly evaluated and discussed with the constituents before it's announced. And that didn't seem to happen. It looked more like decisions had already been made, citizens were caught off guard, surprised, and all the comments that you're getting tonight are a result of that. That could have been avoided by open dialogue and transparency, and that would build more trust in local government than what we have right now. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? Uh, we're not going to spend a few more minutes on this. So. Uh, we've already spent an hour and a half, and uh, I think we've heard the same thing numerous times. So, if you have anything extra to say, we'll let you speak. Otherwise, don't repeat the same thing we've already heard. So, anybody would like to speak? Paul, uh, let, let someone who has not spoken first. Tim Bradley, 6079 Stonewall Jackson Highway. When I lived in town, I used to speak on, on, up here on a number of occasions during the course of, of many uh, councils. And uh, the first thing I would like to do, I'll try to do it without mentioning any names, I would like to draw all attention to the gentleman who is sitting on my left, 
of a life to commend him for walking into the lion's den at an impromptu meeting at the Front Royal Brewery. He literally walked into a lion's den. His only assistant or only person at his side was the director of IT uh, here for Front Royal Virginia. He uh, took every question that he could and he tried to answer it to the best of his ability. That being said, I must admit to feeling a little dizzy. Okay? Um, a long, several years ago, I made the comment about Benjamin Franklin at the end of the Constitutional um, Conventions and all that sort of thing that gave us our wonderful con uh, uh, United States Constitution. I'll be mentioning that a little bit later as well. He gazed upon the back of George Washington's chair. George Washington's chair had a, a half sun with the rays shooting out. And remember thinking to himself, are we going into the rising sun or are we going into the setting sun? Well, I have to wonder just a little bit, because the last few years I have witnessed a grand revival of Main Street. And ripping the guts out of our tourism department is kind of disheartening, and I feel a little dizzy because I feel as if I have made an immediate U-turn and have instead began to head toward the setting sun. And that to me is not a good thing because that means that possibly Front Royal, the historic downtown Main Street, is now heading for his twilight days or years or whatever the case may be. So sadly, that is my opinion. Now I mentioned about going back to the Constitution for just a moment, I would like to do so. It is my opinion, and probably a lot more other people's opinion in this room, and I'll close with this one simple statement. I do believe the Constitution of the United States trumps Robert's rule of order. Thank you, and have a pleasant evening. Uh, I can do that. Um, first, I'd like to say that it's it, it, it's very convenient to call the, uh, the the rule where nobody can say anything to anybody on a night that there's so many people here, so many people that are mad at you all, mad at the, at the administrator, and all of a sudden we're calmed down and supposed to sit up here and act like you all are, 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 are the ultimate. Somebody just got up here and said that Mr. Tedrick never said anything about the Chamber of Commerce. In one of Roger B. and Cheney's articles, Tourism, the Visitor Center, Staff Futures, and Outsourcing, What Does the Present Future Hold? Tedrick noted that he proposes no staff salaries for tourism in his budget proposal for the coming fiscal year. It is a department he has recommended be outsourced to the private sector, apparently at least initially the local Chamber of Commerce. So when he says he didn't do it, there you go. Thank you. Hello, uh, Ben Ruderi, 233 Virginia Avenue. I just wanted to come up here. Um, I had no intention of speaking today. Uh, just wanted to come up here and say thank you, actually, for bringing up the rubber rules. Uh, you will sit up here getting railed against for an hour and a half with a few support. I'm not saying that everything you all decide is perfectly you know, true and the best way to go, but I do believe that you have our best interests at heart. You're all very capable people, and I expect you to take everything these good people have uh, told you into consideration and make the decision from there. In the meantime, I just want to say that I know hundreds of people in the county, and I know that they support you in your decision making, and that not all of them are here today, but I wanted to be partially their voice. Thank you. Thank you. Now, no more space.
obviously I didn't intend on speaking tonight either, but um, I want to say one one thing I want to just ask, or um, when I go on the internet on TripAdvisor, on Yelp, on Google, there are no reviews for, if you Google Front Royal Town, Town Front Royal, whatever, we have no reviews, there are no pictures, there are no links, nothing. And I'm, I don't know if the visitor center, um, if they, you know, promote, you know, giving our account reviews and if you had a good time here, but that's how we attract people. That's just one way. And I think that there needs to be some creativity. Yes, okay, if you, the changes are always happening in life, in the world, and we need some new creativity, some new minds, new talent. I do think that. And the other thing is, Matt Tiedrich is very well respected in this community, and I, I have recently, um, heard a lot of people speak about him and people were begging him to be to run for mayor. Okay? And I'm not gonna sit here and listen to people be disrespectful. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. Thank you. <laughs> if you all want to say for the rest of the meeting that we are pleased to have you here this evening. If you want to leave and take a couple minutes, no 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 more speakers. Uh, this evening. Uh, when we get to our budget, we will have, we'll have all the public hearing on our budget for two times. So anybody would want to come back when that comes up to the public hearing, you're more than welcome to come and address any issue that's on the actual budget. That's not going to happen probably for another month, month and a half. I'm not sure the dates at this time. But uh, you are welcome to come back anytime and speak whatever you have on your mind. But as we're seeing, uh, we're going to close this meeting as far as the public so thank you all for coming.